Hi guys, last week we talked about parrots biting out of fearfulness. Now the majority of people who have um, an issue with the birds biting, it's usually because the birds are biting out of fearfulness. So if you guys haven't seen that video yet, make sure you go to my channel and check that video out first. In today's video, we are going to discuss biting, but this time out of um, territorial aggression. So territorial aggression can manifest it, um, itself in a multitude of ways. One way is that a lot of people have issues with the birds being aggressive um, around the cage. Birds who are territorial could also attack um, other members of the family besides their owners. And finally, many people also have issues with their birds who will um, bite them, which is the primary owner, when other people are around. And that's kind of like the bird's way of saying, hey, there's somebody else in the room and I don't want you to get too close to this kind of like rival of mine. So in today's video, hopefully we can talk more about that and discuss ways to resolve that issue. So since I know that Smokey usually gets really territorial around my bedroom, we are training in kind of like a neutral environment. So this is my kind of home office. She doesn't get territorial here, which means that the chances of her being aggressive towards somebody else is very minimal here. And um, I want to do that because I never want to train my bird in um, the environment that they are actually already aggressive in. Because that's kind of already just setting your bird up for failure and you're going to have people who are going to get bitten and they're never going to want to interact with the bird again. So what I would do is I would put the bird maybe on the couch, a sofa, I'm just going to use uh, my chair here. That's all we really need for this training session aside from um, treats. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so this is Dina and she's going to be helping in our video today with getting Smokey used to um, other people. Alright, so the first thing you guys want to consider when you're training a bird um, around other people is of course you need a volunteer, but of course what's even more important is make sure that you are in your training session always reading your bird's body language. This is what I mean, this is the most important part of all. Make sure whoever's volunteering with you that they never get bitten. Because if um, I somehow misread her body language and I'm not, for example, making sure that her safety is the utmost important, and she gets bitten, she's never going to want to interact with Smokey again. So it's important that whoever you guys choose, make sure that they are safe the entire time so that they never get bitten. Um, again, all it takes is one bite and then whoever it is that you guys have, have helped you out, maybe it's your kids, they're never going to want to interact with the bird again. So that part, super important. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm also going to guide Dina right now through what we're going to do in this um, kind of little exercise. This chair um, is kind of like long enough so that Smokey can walk back and forth between me and Dina. And that's what I want. So right now, we're going to use sunflower seeds. And you can use whatever treats your bird um, enjoys. If it's, for example, pine nuts, bananas, whatever it is your bird likes, you can use that. Very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the sunflower seed and watch what I'm doing. I'm going to tap over here with the sunflower seed and say, come here. Good girl. And if she comes and approaches me with the sunflower seed, I'm going to give her the seed. Now, Dina's going to do the same. There you go. Good girl. And all you want to do is you want to get, you want to get your bird approaching the other person. Um, again, at this point, we're not trying to get the, um, Smokey to step up onto Dina right away. Because if we even try that, she's going to get bitten, and I know that. So we're going to take it very slow, one step at a time. Again, we're going to tap, and I'll show you guys why it's important to tap. Come. Good girl. And reward. And just wait till your bird's done eating. I'm not going to ask Dina to call her over right now, because she's obviously not done. But when she is done, like any second now, right now, you can tap on it. Smokey, come. Good girl, just tell a good girl and then reward her with a treat. This does several things. It lets the bird know that the other person, besides the owner, is not there to harm them. But also, um, it's, not so, it's not somebody who's there to kind of um, fight over the bird's uh, nest or the territory. Smokey, come here. Good girl. There you go. This also lets the bird know that fingers and hands means good things are going to come. And it also lets the bird know that the presence of the other person is also a good thing. Because whenever they're around, um, the bird gets treats and they get a lot of these um, attention, a lot of attention. So that's, 
something that you guys want to make sure you communicate with your bird that the presence of the other person means great things. Smokey, come here. Good girl. So as you guys, so as you guys can see, after Smokey's done um, getting the treat for me, she's automatically already starting to approach Dina like how she is now, because she's expecting that um, Dina's going to be giving her a treat. So this is what you want your birds to be able to do, is to always associate the other person with um, positive things. So right when she's done, Dina's going to continue to tap and good girl and give her a treat. At the beginning of this video, I told you guys that it's important that you take the sunflower seed and you kind of just lightly tap it um, where your bird wants to, where you want the bird to come. And here's why it's important. Eventually, you want to get to the point where you can take the sunflower seed Hold it in the other hand, just use your finger and go, come here, good girl, and you just target your bird to come to where you want to go. Um, some people use a target stick, but I find that I don't always have a target stick, so it's easier for me just to use my finger. Um, as you guys can just uh, tell, when Dina targeted Smokey over um, near her and Smokey got really close, she didn't keep her finger there because she didn't um, want to risk getting bitten. So that's important that you guys always read your bird's body language and if it looks like they're coming too close to your finger and you're kind of scared, you can always just try to be safe and remove your finger and reward with the treat. Smokey, come here. Good girl. There you go. But if you guys keep this up and if you are consistent with doing this, eventually your bird is going to see your finger as, you know, not something that they want to, you know, reach out and grab and bite. But they kind of see your fingers, oh, you know, that's a target, I'm going to get a treat if I approach that. So they don't get aggressive around fingers. Now, the next step we want to do is now, I want to get Smokey to be able to step up on Sadina. But here's the thing. Right now, if she reaches her hand out to pick Smokey up, there is a chance she might get bitten. And I don't want her to kind of be scarred by that. So instead, I'm going to give the bird an opportunity to step up onto her. This is what I mean. Um, this is what you're going to do. When Smokey comes over, Smokey, come. Smokey, come here. We're going to hold the seed um, kind of high up, and we're going to reach her arm out. Step up. Smokey, come. Good girl. And have the bird hop up onto our arm. Now, when Smokey hops up onto my um, arm, I can tell that she's hopping on because she wants that treat. She's distracted by the treat. So this minimizes the chance of your bird biting to anybody who tries to reach their arm out and try to pick the bird up. So you can go ahead and try that. Smokey, come. Smokey, come. Okay, a little bit closer, so maybe right around here. Smokey, come. Smokey, perch. Come on. Okay, maybe I made a mistake. Just a little bit back this way. And then just hold your arm like right here, right in front of her. Come. Good girl, there you go. So as you guys can see, um, when Smokey flies up, there is very, there's a very little chance, or if any, that she's going to, um, come here, that she's going to bite Dina because um, we're giving her the opportunity to hop on, but if she doesn't, that's totally her choice. And when you give your bird the choice and the option to either step up or not to, then you minimize the chances of you getting bitten in the first place. Smokey, come. Good girl. Do you also feel more comfortable having her hop on rather than reaching your arm out? Yeah. Okay. So that's important. I mean, a lot of people in your family, they might be really scared to reach their arm out because maybe they got bitten once. Smokey, come. Good girl. And if they got bitten before, they're going to be really scared to kind of reach their arm out to pick your bird up. But if you can get the bird to fly up onto the arm, or just if your bird is clipped to hop onto the arm, um, they tend to be more comfortable with that. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. And once the bird is on um, her arm, you guys can see that I'm almost immediately calling Smokey back. Because I don't want her to feel too uncomfortable up there in the um, and risk her biting her. So you want to just leave her arm I'm going to leave Smokey on Dina's arm for a little bit, and then I slowly increase the duration. So eventually, she gets to stay on her arm longer and longer, and gets used to doing that. One more time, go ahead. Smokey, come. Smokey, come. Want Another mistake that people make is sometimes when they're scared, um, just give me a second. They tend to do this. They tend to put the arm down like this, and the bird 
they never want to step down because that's kind of like an uncomfortable and unusual um, thing for them to do. So you want to make sure that your arm is kind of like at least at the chest level or higher. And right now, Smokey's kind of like just observing, she's not doing it. As the owner, you can also try to um, encourage your bird to step on. Smokey, come. Good girl, there you go. And then now you can return it back to Perch. Perch. There you go, Smokes. Another tip that I would give you is that when you're reaching out for the bird, they can kind of, they always want to test their um, perch to see if it's steady. So if you're scared and you're kind of showing it by shaking your hand and kind of like moving it back and forth so much, your bird's going to bite you because they, um, they kind of see that as, hey, you know, this is an unsteady perch. Get, I don't want to step up. So they're going to not want to do that. So it's important that when you call your bird up, be firm. Smokes, come. Good girl. Be steady and then just reward when the bird um, hops on. At the beginning, it's really important that you always reward your bird for um, jumping up. And one more tip I would give you is, if you're afraid of getting bitten, don't ever offer your bird your finger like that. You know, so I, I can trust Smokey with doing that, but if Dina were to do that, she might get bitten. So another thing that you could do to minimize the chances of you getting bitten is giving your bird your arm instead of just your finger. It's really hard for them to get a grip onto your arm, especially if you were to flex your arm. So you can do that and actually just come really close to this uh, now and just have her smoky. Come on in. Come here. Okay. You can even go lower and just have her step up onto your arm now. I think I can show you it. Like even closer. Smoky perch. Good girl, there you go. And you guys can see that the whole time that Smokey was doing that, I didn't watch Dina, I was watching Smokey. I was observing her and watching her body language the whole time. Making sure that if I saw any sign that she would bite that um, I would kind of intervene right away and make sure she doesn't get bitten. The moment she gets bitten, she's never going to want to do this again. So that's important. Alright guys, so before we end this video, just one last tip, and it's probably the most important of all. Before I even began filming this, I already planned the last thing we're going to do uh, before this video ends, which is your bird is going to remember the last part of the training session the most. So you always want to make that last part memorable, but also you want to make it the most positive part. So at the very beginning, I snuck an almond into Dina's um, pocket. So that's actually one of Smokey's favorite treats. You always want to end on a good note, but you always want to make it a positive um, experience. So you can take out the almond and collar up onto your arm. Smokey, come. And there you go. Give it to her. And, check this out, while Smokey is on her arm eating the almond, because the almond takes a long time for her to crack open, she's now um, on Dina's arm for a much longer duration than during the entire training session. So this, in a way, helps her to get used to being on other people. But, here's the cool thing, because she's distracted with the almond, she won't be um, focused on biting Dina. So, in a way, she is... She thinks that she's hopping on through the almond, but we're subconsciously teaching her that being around other people means good things. Something I um, learned throughout the years too, guys, is you're having somebody else. Dina's really used to this now. Um, if somebody else is holding your bird, usually if they're holding your bird out like this, the arm tends to get tired. So one way you can kind of minimize the stress in your arm and to get uh, that person to be more comfortable is just folding in your elbow like this, and that makes it a lot less tiring. If your bird's claws are, um, it seems to be scratching the arm, usually what I find is when people are nervous, they kind of drop the arm like this. So the bird's constantly trying to um, grip more firmly, and they're trying to climb up to the highest point. So that could be um, the reason why it hurts when your bird is on um, somebody else's arm. Just tell that person to keep the arm um, folded in, but also this um, arm parallel to the ground, and that way um, it won't hurt. Now, for a lot of you guys watching, if you guys are thinking about getting a parrot, something that I would consider is this. With a dog, like with Snuggles, she will automatically love anybody, especially if they feed her. And you can make, you know, some mistakes with a the dog, they'll still love you no matter what. But with a parrot, it's a little bit different. Most parrots in the wild are monogamous, which means that they will pick one mate, and they'll stick with that mate for the rest of their lives. So in captivity, a bird like Smokey um, will choose a mate. Now, I just luckily happen to be um, who she perceives to be that mate. 
So once your bird matures, um, usually they will pick their favorite person as kind of um, be somebody that they completely trust with, you know, scratching their heads, with petting them, and with picking them up. Um, they can, however, a lot of these birds, especially during the um, mating season, they tend to be very aggressive around other people in the family. That's something, oops, she dropped her almond. That's something that you need to really consider before you get a bird, is that understand that your bird might not be kind of like this family pet that you hope them to be. And uh, just be prepared for that if you're thinking about adding a parrot to your home. I'm kind of just giving you guys more uh, tips and ideas as I think of them. So another thing that people often um, have trouble with is they, uh, I get messages all the time saying that people have birds that are really territorial around their cage. So they'll bite when they're, they're, whenever they're around the cage. What I recommend is that you get different, um, or at least just get another cage in addition to the one you already have. Maybe an outdoor aviary. It doesn't need to be too big. Of course, the bigger the cage, the better it is. But if you guys can't afford or you don't have the space for something too big, just get them something like a rabbit hutch, something that size, outdoors. And my tip is if your bird is territorial around their cage, they kind of perceive that as their nest. So always change around the uh, cage. You know, move the perches around, reorient um, the, ca the um, cage, put it in a different location in the house, um, switch out the toys, and this way your bird kind of sees that this cage is, a, is it's an environment that's always constantly changing and they don't become too used to you know, this one nest that they have that they need to protect. Alright guys, so hopefully this video helped you with getting your bird used to other people in the house and maybe you guys can develop a more trusting relationship with the bird and everybody else. So if it did help you out, um, do me a favor, if there's a like button below, make sure you guys click that like button and also subscribe to my channel for future videos um, to come. And I'll see you guys next time.